Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> thank you for your introduction, Massimiliano, and thank you for <laughs> inviting me to this workshop, organizers. And today I'm talking about uh, uh, quantum information theoretic approach to thermodynamics of quantum many body systems. So that is called uh, resource theory of thermodynamics. That is slightly different from stochastic thermodynamics, but I make some connection between these two approaches. Okay, so, and this work was done in Caltech in 2018 when I visited there. And that's for a short sabbatical, that was just two months. And my collaborators are Philip Feist, uh, Fernando Brandao, and Kotaro Kato, and Hiroshi Nagaoka, he's in Japan. And our letter was published in PRA last year, and our long technical paper is still under review. Okay, so <laughs> let me start from a general introduction uh, and a general motivation of our work. Okay, so <laughs> Our basic motivation is that how to find a complete thermodynamic potential for non-equilibrium and quantum situations. So of course, entropy provides the complete characterization of state compatibility between macroscopic equilibrium states in the conventional thermodynamics. I mean, for example, we can say that the second law is stated as follows. So a state conversion is possible and if and only if the entropy increases, or the work is greater than free energy difference. <laughs> Here, an important point is that we have um, if and only if statement, that, is, that means a necessary and sufficient condition for state conversion. So this is an amazing property of equilibrium conventional thermodynamics, but it is still very non-trivial whether we can have the same kind of characterization of state compatibility by a single thermodynamic, single thermodynamic potential for out of equilibrium and fully quantum situations. And by complete, I mean that the state characterization is given in a necessary and sufficient manner, I mean, if and only if we. So <laughs> our question is whether the KL divergence, Kerbach rival divergence, really serves as such a kind of a complete potential or not. So this is our main question. And our answer is actually <laughs> yes, and we have proved that uh, there exists a thermodynamic potential that can completely characterize state compatibility of a broad class of interacting quantum many body systems with some physically reasonable assumptions, even for out of equilibrium and fully quantum situations. So our approach is based on resource theory of thermodynamics, and we use some rainy entropy quantities, and also we use, we use um, quantum hypothesis testing. So, of course, hypothesis testing is very different from some of the thermodynamics, but I will show that uh, that kind of quantum information theory concept is fundamentally related to thermodynamic characterization of state compatibility. Okay, so next I will talk about some fundamental concepts uh, related to our approach. So we can imagine that there is a system that we call S and there is a heat bus that we call P. And the entire evolution is performed on the entire system and the reduced dynamics of the system is given by this. We just trace out the bus degrees of freedom here. And this is called a CPTP map that is a completely positive and trace preserving map. And this is a very general characterization of non-unitary dynamics. I mean, the entire system obeys a unitary dynamics, but if we look at only the system, then these dynamics can be non-unitary in general. And this is very general, so we need to specify some thermodynamic properties of this kind of dynamics. The first important class of quantum dynamics, thermodynam thermodynamic dynamics, is called Gibbs preserving maps. So this is this row Z is the Gibbs state of the Hamiltonian of the system S, 
And the Gibbs preserving map means that the Gibbs state doesn't change under such a map. So this is a very natural assumption because if we look at just a relaxation process, in, for example, there is a system and there is a very large heat bus and we look at the relaxation process, then we can expect that the Gibbs state doesn't change at all. So in that sense, this is the most naive and natural characterization of thermodynamic processes. And the other class of thermodynamic operations that is commonly considered in resource theory of thermodynamics is called thermal operations. In this setup, so the initial state of the heat bus is given by the Gibbs state, Gibbs state of the bus Hamiltonian. And we suppose that the entire operation on the entire system is commutable with the sum of the system's Hamiltonian and the bus Hamiltonian. Of course, in general, there is an interaction Hamiltonian, but this assumption says that the sum of the energies of S and B it conserves under this operation. So this represents the philosophy that the energy is a kind of resource in this process. And this condition is satisfied in many uh, quantum systems, at least approximately. For example, a typical example is the James Cummings model at a resonant condition. Also another example is quantum mass, quantum mass equation with a rotating wave approximation. So this approximation guarantees this uh, condition. And in the classical case, these two classes of operations are equivalent. So, but in the quantum case, uh, it is known that there is a Gibbs preserving map that is not necessarily a summer operation. So for example, in the case of the summer operation, so we cannot create any quantum coherence because of this uh, constraint. But in general, by Gibbs preserving maps, uh, we can create uh, quantum coherence sometimes. So in that sense, <laughs> uh, the Gibbs preserving map is a strictly larger class than the summer operations. So this difference is very important if we look at quantum heat ranges. Okay, then I'll explain a so-called single shot work bound that is very commonly adapted in the resource theory approach. So in this approach, so we suppose that the work stretch that is also called battery, double, is given by just a two level system. So this is a very simplified assumption. So, and we suppose that in the initial state and the state of the work stretch is in the ground state, and uh, that is just a pure state. And after some, after some, some dynamic operations, the final state of the work stretch is given by the excited state here. And again, this is in a pure state. So this means that the work value is always given by W, uh, and that does not fluctuate at all. So this is very contrastive to the stochastic thermodynamics approach, because in that case, we suppose that the work is fluctuating. But here, a crucial assumption is that the work is a definite non-fluctuating quantity. Under this assumption, <laughs> there are two non-trivial work bounds. So both of them are given by <laughs> a kind of Rainier entropies. Uh, first, if you want to convert the given state to another non-equilibrium state, then the necessary work cost is bounded by the so-called max entropy or max divergence. So this is a, this is equivalent to the Rennie infinity entropy and the definition is given by this. But anyway, so we have a um, no, not we have a non-conventional bound uh, in this state of conversion. And <laughs> the other case is that we start from a non-equilibrium state and we want to extract the work like this. And in that case, the upper bound of the work is bounded by the mini entropy that is equivalent to the Rennie zero entropy. So, yeah, <laughs> in this sense, so <laughs> we have two different uh, second order of some dynamics if we suppose the work is not fractured. So this is 
different from the result of stochastic thermodynamics, where always the KL divergence gives the uh, upper bound or the lower bound of the work. Okay, then <laughs> I will go back to our original, original question. So our original question is that, um, how to define some reversible thermodynamic potential for out of equilibrium situations. In the case of equilibrium conventional thermodynamics, so we of course have uh, the equilibrium free energy that is written as F. And if you convert some equilibrium state one to another equilibrium state two, then the work bound is just given by the difference of the uh, equilibrium free energy. And in the opposite direction, we <laughs> have the same bound but just the sign is different. In this sense, um, this is a kind of, we can make a reversible cycle from here to here and here to here. And the equality is achieved, I mean, the process is reversible in the quasi-static limit, where the work cost exactly cancel in the cyclic operation from here to here and here to here. And this represents the philosophy of the second law of thermodynamics that states that we cannot extract any positive amount of work from a cyclic operation without remaining any effect on the outside one. So this implies that the state conversion is, in this case, completely characterized, characterized by a single thermodynamic potential. But on the other hand, in the case of the single shot and non-equilibrium case, so we have two different bounds s infinity and s zero. So from this, we can see that the analogy with the conventional case apparently fails because s zero and s infinity do not match in general. And just a simple cyclic operation requires a positive amount of work, s infinity minus s zero. So this is in general positive. So we can't make the cycle reversible. So in this sense, a single complete thermodynamic potential does not exist except for the limiting case that both states are in thermal equilibrium where S0 and S infinity become equivalent. Also, another technical remark is that <laughs> these bounds are applicable only for gives preserving maps in the quantum case. For the thermal operations, it is not known whether this kind of characterization is possible or not in the free quantum energy. So these are the problems of this approach. Okay, now, so let me state our specific questions. So the first question is that, is it still possible to have a single thermodynamic potential, that is some F, and that completely characterizes state of compatibility in out of equilibrium and free quantum situations. And the question two is that if that is yes, then does the potential work not only for the Gibbs preserving maps, but also for summer operations? So this is our question. And our answer, our answers are both positive. And for the question one, we can say that if we take the asymptotic limit, this means the macroscopic limit or a thermodynamic limit. And if the state is spatially ergodic and the Hamiltonian is local and translation invariant, then we can get a single thermodynamic potential here. And the answer for the second question is also positive. And if we can get a small amount of quantum coherence, small amount means sub-extensive amount of quantum coherence, then we can replace the Gibbs preserving maps to some operations. So these are our main results of this work. Okay, so let me next explain what, what is spatially ergodic states. So our setup is a mini body system, mini body spin system or lattice in any spatial dimension. I mean, one dimensional or two dimensional or three dimensional or yeah, any spatial dimension, it's okay. And we can, we say that a state is spatially ergodic if the fluctuation of any macroscopic observable, like the total magnetization or something like that, that is an extensive quantity. If uh, the fluctuations of such a quantity vanishes in the macroscopic limit, then any macroscopic observable has a definite value. 
So in such a case, we say that the state is ergodic. In other words, so <laughs> if there's no phase coexistence in a lattice system, like uh, different magnetic domains or something like that, then we say that the state is specially ergodic. Okay, so, and also we support that Hamiltonian is a local, I mean, the interaction is local and translation is bound. Okay, then under these assumptions and under proper definition of asymptotic limit, we can prove that both of the Rainy zero entropy and the Rainy infinity entropy collapse to a single value, and that is given by the Karpak diagonal divergence. So this is our main result, and this guarantees that in both directions becomes equivalent, at least asymptotically. And the thermodynamic potential is given by the KL divergence. Okay, also, here you still have three minutes. Okay. Also, this is equivalent to a generalization of the quantum strength lemma for quantum hypothesis test testing. So beyond the independent and identically distributed situations, I mean for interacting situations. Okay, and the remaining part of our result is stated as this. So we can now introduce a standard non-equilibrium free energy based on the KL divergence rate. And our main theorem is is as follows. <laughs> rho, a state, quantum state rho can be asymptotically converted into rho prime by a thermal operation with a work cost double and with a, the height of small amount of quantum coherence, if and only if the work is greater than the free energy difference. So the important point is that we now have the necessary and sufficient statement here. So this, in general, we cannot get in some dynamic situations. Okay, so um, now very roughly speaking, <laughs> we can prove that uh, a thermodynamic potential can emerge for many body quantum systems, which can completely characterize a state compatible. Okay, so finally, let me mention some technical details. <laughs> so, yeah, we can consider smooth entropy and uh, information spectrum. So these are main ingredient in our work and th these are actually very complicated quantities, but uh, this is a proper way to take the asymptotic limit of the mini and max divergences. So the, for example, the smooth divergence of the max divergence is given by this and we can smooth the first argument here, tau, I mean rho here, and this is a definition of the smooth uh, divergence. And then we can consider a macroscopic asymptotic limit where we consider some increasing sequence of quantum states, not necessarily in IRD. And the information spectrum is given by these two quantities. And here we take the limit of n, n is the system size, and then we take the limit of epsilon goes to zero. So we can't exchange the order of these limits. And it is very crucial to take the macroscopic limit first, and then we take the singular limit. I mean, the uh, epsilon goes to the. And our main theorem is stated as this, and the lower spectrum, information spectrum, and the upper information spectrum are both equivalent to the Karbach divergence rate. So this is our main theorem. Okay, finally, let me mention <laughs> the relation to the quantum hypothesis testing. So the hypothesis testing is a task to distinguish two different quantum states, and we want to minimize uh, the error probability of the second kind given by this, while keeping the success probability like this. So this characterizes a kind of large deviation property of the error probability, and because this is logarithmic of this quantity. And it is, important to see that if eta, eta is here, eta is close to one, then the hypothesis testing divergence is close to the Rainy zero entropy. And if eta is close to zero, then the hypothesis testing entropy is close to the max entropy here. So this is the reason why we need the hypothesis testing concept for thermodynamics.
Um, now our main result can be rephrased as this. <laughs> this is this says that the asymptotic large deviation behavior of the error rate of hypothesis testing is given by the KL divergence rate. So this is known as Kandan Stein's lemma, and it is well established for the IID case. But we generalize this to non-IID situations. I mean the Hamiltonian is interacting and yeah, state is correlated. So this is Technically, this is our main result, this one. Okay, so let me summarize. So we have proved the existence of a complete thermodynamic potential that is also called a complete monotone in the context of resource theory for a broad class of quantum spin systems out of equilibrium. Here, the assumption is state is ergodic and the Hamiltonian is local and translation invariant. Uh, and, and the spatial dimension can be arbitrary. And our proof consists of generalized quantum state schema beyond its IID situations. And we have constructed, we have also constructed asymptotic summer operations in the fully quantum region. And this result can be regarded as an important step towards resource theory of interacting and truly meaningful systems. And our point issue is, for example, what does resource theory tell about the ergodicity breaking case, like the many body localization or spin glass or et cetera. Okay, so this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention.